Okay, so uh, a lot has been happening, okay? Uh, we all know that by now, okay? If you don't know that by now, okay, you must be really, really, really in the dark, okay? Africa is the birthplace of four or of all hu humanity, okay? Uh, mankind, everybody knows it. Australia is, is a leading, leading research country. Australia has some very, very, very good research facilities. Uh, believe it or not, okay, all the in, innovative, um, you know, development and technology in the world in terms of, like, you know, science, engineering, uh, medicine, a whole a lot of them come from Australia. Okay, and I, I went to one of the best universities as well. Uh, uh, you know, and my and I major in uh, mechanical engineering technology. Uh, so you know, Australia is uh, the forefront of uh, technology innovation and and research. Um, we know even of one Aboriginal Australian, okay, Black Australian. Uh, who invented the modern helicopter? So uh, by the name um, David Unibon. Okay, so Australia leads in research. Okay, so uh, they've been researching um, the origin of human beings, and these Europeans always do this. Africans know that everybody came from Africa, but Europeans are still in denial of where they come from. Not until about a hundred years ago, Europeans thought that they built everything, but little did they know that they they evolved later, they mutated from the original African. So uh, the evidence is mounting up, okay, um, a, lot, a lot has changed and it's very, very important that uh, we stay in tune and, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, educate ourselves. We educate ourselves about uh, what's going on in the world uh, so we don't, we don't find, it, find ourselves in the dark. All right, because these people are advancing. They are advancing and we need to keep up with them. Okay, we need to keep up with them. Uh, we're very, very fortunate that people of African descent, okay, we, we, have, uh, we have been resilient. Uh, we have, you know, uh, everywhere else where indigenous people are, they've been conquered, they've been subjugated. Uh, their lands have been taken off them. They've been, um, you know, wiped out, okay. Uh, Europeans commit, committed mass um, genocide on these people and nearly wipe wipe them out or wipe some of them out, uh, such as the story of Australia. But Africans have been very very resilient. Okay, the original man uh, remains uh, res resilient and the strongest. And uh, a couple of days ago, I've been bringing news about uh, a development about uh, Muammar Gaddafi and and everything about him. And one of his prophecies was that. Uh, the children of Africa will rule the world. Uh, we know that uh, Muammar Gaddafi was brutally murdered, and uh, you know, based on his ideologies and his philosophy and stuff like that, and how he wants to govern his country. So Muammar Gaddafi believed that you know the future of humankind, okay, is with Africa. You know, the origin of humankind is is Africa, and the future will be Africa. So um, yeah, Africa is the future. So yeah, uh, I want to welcome you guys again to 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 my channel. If you're new, please subscribe. Uh, today's uh, the first of November, uh, first of the month, 2019. And uh, yeah, slowly 2019 is uh, you know rolling out. Uh, it's going to be 2020 very soon. Uh, Vision 2020. When I was a kid, I, I kept hearing Vision 2020, Vision 2020, uh, sustainability, blah 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 blah. Vision 2020. <laughs> And it seems so far away. Vision 2020 seems so, so far away. But here we are, family. <laughs> here we are. I've grown beard. You know, I've grown old. I am old. So, uh, I mean, things are changing. All right. So I'm not going to take too much time. I have a lot of grounds to cover. I have a lot of articles to pre present to you. I'll let the articles do much of the talking. Uh, but uh, if you have any uh, contributions, by all means, put them in put them in the comments uh, section, and I will attend to it. All right. Invite your friends to 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 subscribe. Okay. Uh, to join in. Okay. Because this is a very very proud moment for Africa. Uh, all right. Every day, every day, uh, Europeans are realizing that they they are uh, the ones that are being uh, the party poopers, okay. Uh, so you know, a whole lot is changing. Okay, the game is changing now. The game is changing. Africans are waking up. Everything is changing in at a very, very, very fast pace. So it's up to you to be abreast with all these things happening. All right, all right, family. 
Okay, so without much ado, I am gonna, uh, and if I have time, I will, I will uh, put my email in the email address in the chat. If you feel like joining me, you can join me. All right. An excuse to have a drink. Uh, this is a boiled pineapple um, skin. Okay, uh, I always love to boil the pineapple skin uh, whenever I, uh, I buy a pineapple and I have a big pot, you know, and boil the pineapple skin and, and make myself a very refreshing juice, okay, especially in summer. This is very, very refreshing, boiled uh, pineapple skin, and it has some medicinal uh, properties if you do that. So, yeah, uh, I mean, kills fever and whatnot. So, yeah. All right, so it is really hot. My air conditioning is running and I'm still sweaty. All right, so uh, bear with me. Okay, uh, summer is upon us here in Australia and it gets very, very hot here. All right, okay, so without much ado, I am going to go into the um, articles. Uh, so two days ago, if you if you haven't seen my latest uh, skit yet, okay, my latest uh, small video about six minutes long, okay, uh, check it out, okay. Uh, I did a small uh, video uh, and, you know, imposed uh, a voice or related voice uh, conversation from a radio radio station. Uh, and, you know, Australians uh, are talking about this uh, new find, okay, uh, the cradle of, of, of human, humankind being found in, in, in Southern Africa. And we know when, we know, you know, Africa, Southern Africa is the highest you know, and Eastern Africa is the highest elevation, in, you know, of Africa. So this is where the, the sun hits the earth the most. OK, and it just makes sense that life will come out of there. OK, life will not come up from the poles. Life will not come up from Europe. OK, life has always been from Africa. Everywhere else has moved. Everywhere else has, has drifted away from Africa. Africa still remains anchored. OK, Africa remains anchored and centered. All right, family. Uh, so, let's see. Let me. Uh, if you join the live stream, please let us know who you are. Okay, let us know who you are. Not me, not me, not me, not me scared, not me ashamed. All right. All right. So, my first article is from ABC News, okay, abcnews.com.au. Uh, uh, this is ABC Radio. They did a, uh, a program on this topic. Origin of modern humans traced back to ancient African wetland, okay? So we know this, okay, for for so long, science has told, science has told us that uh, humans originated from Oromo, or uh, Oromia region of uh, Ethiopia, just because they found Lucy there dating back 4 million years. But since then, they found so many. They found so many um, fossils and dating back other millions. But Lucy was more of like a modern human. Uh, that's why they, they, they deemed it that. Uh, but uh, hominids have been found throughout the planet, throughout the globe. So uh, Asante Akan, uh, uh, what was this? Uh, DC Brad925, thanks for joining the stream, family. Uh, hey, I just found um, Asante Aken on my mom's side and um, Iba Yoruba on my dad. Yeah, yeah. Blessings, family. We are all family. All right. So, yeah, I did my DNA test uh, going back uh, a couple of years now. And uh, yeah, I am Berber, uh, Moroccan, Algerian, Mozambique. Uh, Rwandan Tutsi, okay, primarily, this is my, my DNA. But of course, I am I am of African-American descent, so I do have, uh, if you see my DNA map, I am like all over Africa, right? I have like uh, from Egypt, I have from uh, Maur uh, Mauritania, I have from Sierra Leone, Gambia. Um, surprisingly, I have none from Ghana, but I do have from Cameroon. I do have from Cameroon, Angola, um, I have from Mozambique, Tanzania, and uh, Somalia, and surprisingly, no, no Ethiopia. So uh, this is very uh, surprising. But you know, we all came from Africa. So ultimately, uh, I am ninety-nine point nine percent African, even though my grandfather is 
Pat Jamin. My grandfather is a half caste Pat, Jam Pat Jamin, okay, African American. But I have very little German ancestry. So uh, this speaks volume, okay, this speaks volume. Okay, so without much ado, I'm gonna read this article. All right, thank, thank you for joining me, uh, DC Bright925. Okay, thanks for your contribution. So scientists in Australia have added a new uh, dimension to, uh, let, me, let me blow this up, I think I'm sitting too far away from the computer. All right, so scientists, uh, scientists in Australia have added a new uh, dimension uh, to our understanding of where we first emerged from tracing the first modern humans back to what was once a single wet, uh, giant wetland in Southern Africa uh, 200,000 years ago. So don't be fooled, okay? This giant wetland stretched from Southern Africa all the way to, say, Ethiopia, all right? Uh, sometimes the media can uh, miscue all these information and, and then people just read a, a line and run away with it. But th this um, giant wetland, okay, stretched from Southern Africa all the way to, to Northern Africa. And the Sahara was green as well. Okay. They even found old human remains in Morocco. Okay. So people are all over there. They found hominids even in, you know, all over the world. South America, North America, Europe, everywhere, okay? But the origin, okay, don't be fooled, the origin is Africa. And when we're talking about modern human beings, modern human beings, our existence as modern human beings is only 200,000 years, okay? Anatomically correct human being, okay? You and me, you and I, the way we look, the way we talk and everything, okay? I have never seen a, a monkey communicate with a cat. I've never seen it or talk the same language with a cat or sound or whatever. I've never seen a gorilla perform the same vocal sounds as a chimpanzee. But you, wherever you are on this planet, I can speak, you understand me. If you learn my language, you can understand me. All right. This means that we all have one single you know, origin. We are all one. We are all human beings. I can I can have a child with an Inuit or uh, so-called um, uh, what Eskimo. Okay, I can have a child with a European. I can have a child with uh, an Asian. I can have a child with anybody on this planet. Okay, and still give birth to a human being. All right. This tells you that we are all of one one origin. Okay. So I'll take that take that again. Scientists in Australia have added a new uh, dimension to our understanding of where we first emerged from tracing the first modern humans back to what was once a single giant wetland in Southern Africa 200,000 years ago. The Australian research from um, Garvin um, Institute scientists was published overnight. So this was dated uh, October 28th, 29th. Uh, what's the date here? October, October 29th, Tuesday. So this week, okay. So when it says overnight, that would have been from Monday, okay. So um, it takes us a it takes us a geographic step further on on from the current understanding, which has been that anatomically modern humans arose in East Africa or the the Horn of Africa. So again, I I state that don't be fooled by that. Okay, this giant wetland is basically the whole of East Africa. So humans could have evolved from anywhere but just migrated and when they die, they fossilize and they, we find their remains. It doesn't mean, where, where we find their remains doesn't mean that that is where they originated from. It could just be, be that they migrated there. But when the evidence amounts that they find several of these fossils, especially of different generations, okay, they find them in one specific location, it gives us an idea uh, or close to the truth that this is where humans originated from. So, uh, yeah. So now we're no longer going to conceive or accept that, uh, that humans originated from Ethiopia, but now we, we, we would say that they originated from Botswana. Okay, Botswana. Uh, so um, the work, the work cross-reference uh, climate and geological, uh, geological data, uh, but it's centered on the use of mitochondrial uh, DNA from select people in this new region. Uh, professor David Lambert is the inaugural professor of evolutionary biology at Griffith 
uh, university. So, um, yeah, if you if you haven't seen my my recent video, please go check it out. Okay, uh, the the com uh, the interview uh, is on there, so go check it out. I will link it to this channel, so uh, you can check it out. All right, so uh, I'll be moving on to another article. Um, anyone else watching please leave your comments okay let us know who you are okay like the stream okay like the stream and share okay so this is another article from uh abcnews.com.au uh, okay another australian news uh, outlet okay it says that scientists traced modern humans to a single giant wetland in southern africa okay so here is a a, a picture or an image of the uh khoisan people or the Khoi Khoi and the Sun people, they have it. They've joined them together and called them the Khoi Suns. Okay, uh, I think they, they, they're two different people, but uh, they've joined them together because they, they're both very, very ancient. And these Khoi Suns or Khoi Khoi people are one of the ancient, the most ancient people, okay, on this planet. Okay, so uh, we, we, all, we all can trace our, our DNA to these people. Okay, we could all could, could trace our DNA to these people. So um, yeah, what what a lot of people do, especially DNA companies like uh, 23andMe, okay, uh, don't actually or Ancestry.com don't don't actually look at ancient DNA. Okay, but my my DNA com is is by an Australian Australian um, research company that does ancient DNA. So when when my DNA test was done. OK, if, even though North Africa has a lot of people migrate to to North Africa, uh, like the Ottoman Empire and, and, and the uh, people from the uh, um, so-called Middle East or Northeast Africa region or Arabians, OK, coming primarily, OK, uh, Ottoman, the Ottoman Turks, when they came in and, and mixed with all these people and make them light skin, OK, despite that, OK, my DNA still traced me to 100% or 60%, you know, um, Moroccan Berber and Algerian Mozabite. All right, so it had no, it had no European um, traces in there, and it had no uh, Arab traces in, in there. It it puts me 100% African. All right, okay. So moving on, um, uh, Jules. Honsi hunters, uh, sorry if I butchered that name. Uh, Honsi hunters have some of the longest living uh, lineages of our human history. Okay, dating back, I think, three hundred thousand years. Okay, these people. Today, the land of uh, the land of the Zan Zambezi uh, River is dry and inhospitable. Only a collection of large salt pans hit uh, hint at what the area was like in the past. But if you could travel back in time, 200,000 years, you would see a lush. Let me pull this up. But if you if you could travel back in time, 200 years, you could uh, you would see a lush uh, wetland the size of New Zealand stretching across what is now northern uh, Botswana, uh, heading into Namibia in the west and Zimbabwe in the east. It was home to giraffes, lions, and zebras. And we know North Africa was home to uh, giraffes, giraffes, lions, and zebras, and, and elephants. Okay, uh, even if even when you when you look at the history of um, Hannibal uh, Barca, okay, uh, he was riding on elephants conquering uh, the Roman Empire. All right, so yeah, it was home to giraffes, lions, zebras, and uh, new Australian-led research suggests it was also the birthplace of the earliest ancestors of our own species anatomically modern humans okay so in context we're talking about modern humans the study published in nature this morning uh used dna sequencing across uh cross referenced with other information including geological and climate data to pinpoint the origin of our earliest maternal lineage uh known as lo Okay, so uh, we know in Africa the the maternal uh, lineage is divided into three parts. Okay, uh, three parts we have L1, L2, and L3. Okay, so L1 remained in southern Africa. Okay, which L1 
we, we are the main ancestors or direct, direct ancestors to the Bantu people. Okay, so from, from say, uh, from uh, eastern part of Nigeria onwards, West Africans are not Bantu. Okay, get that clear. West Africans are not Bantu people. West Africans are uh, not Northern Africans. Okay, Northern Africans uh, that migrate itself due to the, uh, the drying of the Sahara. Okay, uh, so, so uh, West Africa is L2 and L3 is East Africa. So L3 is going to migrate out of out of Africa into Asia and become M. Okay, and become M and it's going to break out into uh, D and, and O and whatnot. Okay, so what North, this is the reason why North Africans are indigenous Africans as well, because M3 or L3, okay, L3 gave rise to North Africans. All right, so uh, my DNA is uh, is L3 or M, okay? So uh, that, that's why I, uh, I trace my ancestry to to uh, Rwanda, okay, Tutsi Rwanda and uh, Tanzania and um, Mozambique and stuff like that. So um, mitochondrial uh, DNA, which is found in mitochondrial or batteries of our cells is only passed down to you from your mother. Okay, whereas your nuclear DNA found in the nuclear nuclei of your cells, um, you inherit from both parents. Okay, we've known for a long time that modern humans originated in Africa and roughly uh, 200,000 years ago. But what we hadn't known until this study was where exactly is homeland? Where exactly this homeland was? Okay, said uh, Garvin Institute uh, geneticist Vanessa uh, Hayes, a co-author of the paper. So uh, there's a animation video there. Okay, you can go check it out. Okay, from from uh, from here, Southern Africa, humans migrated out. Okay, so this is a very very big wetland. Okay, going into Ethiopia and and whatnot. All right, so check it out. Check the video out. It will be in the description box. All right, so we also were in short where our ancestors traveled to next, and this research sheds light on that too. So this wetland was actually an oasis in a desert, Professor Hay said. Uh, it was completely surrounded by a very uninhabitable area, which led to our hunter-gatherer gatherer ancestors staying put for some 70,000 years. Okay, Then uh, 130,000 years ago, the climate began to change. Uh, first, op first opening up a green corridor to the uh, northeast and 20,000 years later to the southeast. Okay, so can you imagine how long this took? How long? Right? And all these climatic conditions will cause humans to evolve. Okay, it will cause ev ev evolution. Okay, and believe it or not, humans are still evolving. We just don't see it. We, we can't see it, but humans are evolving. Okay, especially when we are we are actually mixing. No, there's nobody here that is is a hundred percent anything. Okay, I may look very black, but I'm actually sixty percent something else. Sixty percent Moroccan Berber, and if you see the Berbers, Berbers look very white. Majority of them, there are black Berbers called the Touaregs as well. But where, where my ancestors came from, they're very, very pale skin. So people, people evolution, people change it. And believe it or not, the planet will go back to being um, a darker shade of people. Uh, it is very necessary because the sun is getting hotter and everybody needs uh, melanin. Okay, So this is what is changing a lot of the perception about uh, Europeans as well. And, and they come they coming to the conclusion and the, the knowledge that, look, uh, we've been very We've been very, very intolerant towards uh, the darker generation, the d darker people, and they are actually our lifeline. Okay, so that's why you're seeing all these uh, racist people, you know, dying. Racism is dying out. Everybody is, you know, up in arms and you know, embracing humanity and stuff because they all know the truth now. They've come to the conclusion they can't, they can't go back anymore. It's very, very necessary, right? In, in, in Australia, it's very, very dire if you have a pale skin because the sun here is very, very hot. But the biggest killer here, believe it or not, the biggest killer of, of people here is skin cancer. 
or cancer in general. Melanoma, skin cancer, kills a lot of people here in Australia. So everybody here understands that you have to either be black or, you know, go with sunscreen. And myself, myself, I need sunscreen here because it's damn very hot. All right. All right. So uh, going going back, back to this article, okay. Uh, this matches the divergence we see in the uh, genetic data around this time as well. So the scientists are confident that this is when the first migrations out of our homeland began. Okay, so yeah. Uh, so again, just comprehend the time span it took for all these evolution uh, processes to, to take effect. So longest living lineage of our human history. Okay, so Professor Hayes with unextended uh, Ju Huanzi uh, family who lived in a region that uh, thought to be the birthplace of modern humans. Okay, so here we go. So when when the Germans uh, occupied Southern Africa, Namibia, and, and stuff like that, they 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 try to wipe out these um, Khoisans and the the uh, what's the name now? Um, is it Huiti? No, it can't be Huiti. Um, the name just skipped me now, but you know the people in Angola and Namibia and stuff like that. All right. Yeah, the sun people, they try to wipe them out. There's a documentary on that called the Shark, Shark Island. So you can check that out. So now uh, Namibia is trying to sue Germany for uh, genocide and stuff like that. So yeah, we'll see the outcome of that. Uh, to trace our very earliest origins, the researchers uh, collected blood samples from studying uh, from study participants in Namibia and uh, South Africa, looking for people who carry markers of the LO lineage or rare LO sub lineages. Okay, so when a screen, uh, when a screen uh, participant was shown to have one of these known markers, this, the team sub sequenced their whole um, mitochondrial uh, genome or um, mito genome, enabling them to continue uh, to contribute 198 new uh, mito genomes to the current LO database of over 1,000. The already uh, they already knew that the Khoisan from Southern Africa carry the Elo lineage, uh, but they wanted to look more widely than that. Okay, so uh, the Elo is a broad um, subgroup. Okay, so if you look in that, you will see different um, divergence in the Elo. All right. So uh, we actually set out to look for rare lineages in people who study uh, who today don't identify as. Poisson uh, said, uh, led author uh, Eva Chan, uh, a statistical geneticist also at the Garvin Institute. Okay. So that's uh, um, Eva, Eva Chan. Okay. This helped Dr. Chan and her colleagues, uh, colleagues unravel the complexity of our lineage stretching back 200,000 years. Uh, this is the longest uh, living lineage of our human history, said Professor Hayes. Okay. So the Khoisans are the longest, have the longest uh, uh, lineage of all human beings on the planet. All right. So uh, it's it cannot just be as simple as Khoisan as one people. So we really had to tease that out. Okay. So. Mitochondrial DNA is relatively short, consisting of a more, uh, modest 16,000 DNA base pairs compared to the 3 billion base pairs of our regular genome found inside uh, the nucleus. It also has a slightly higher mutation rate, which means uh, geneticists can extract more information from each generation, Dr. Chan said. Uh, this mu mutation rate allows scientists to use the mitochondrial DNA as a clock to estimate a timeline for how the lineage developed and diverged. And because, uh, because the mitogenome is small and abundant in human cells, we can actually sequence a lot of individuals and get a lot of information, Dr. Chan said. So uh, does this uh, settle the debate about where we came from? It's a good question. So, uh, the most uh, genetically uh, 
diverse human populations are found in Southern Africa. Uh, Chris Bennett evolving uh, picture. All right. Uh, there's a comment here. Uh, Mahale Selepe, thanks for joining the stream, sister. Uh, yeah, I live in Australia. I live in Melbourne. I've been here almost 20 years. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I know you live in Perth. So, um, yeah, how is it How is it going in Perth? I saw, I saw the news that Melbourne is hotter than Perth. How can that be? How is that possible? But, yeah, you know that in 50 years, in the next 50 years, uh, Western Australia will become a desert. So uh, I'll let, uh, I should let you know that. Uh, based on the current data, I do believe that Southern Africa is most logical uh, origin of the founder uh, population of Elo and uh, everyone walking around today. Okay, so everybody walking around today, Southern Africa has the oldest genetic information about our origin. All right, about our origin. So make no mistake, okay, make no mistake. The Garden of Eden is Africa. Don't let anybody lie to you that the Garden of Eden is in some desert in, in, in Arabia or in Iraq and that, okay? It's not, it's not. Uh, right. You, you, if you want to know the evidence of a Garden of Eden, look for diversity. Look for diversity. Diversity is, is so much in Africa. Everywhere you turn, everywhere you turn, diversity is everywhere. I should tell you that is the origin of life. All right. Makes sense. Makes sense. Moving on. So, uh, while other human lineages may have split off from Elo and then gone extinct, uh, we don't have any information from these people. We are just talking about the survivors of the last 200,000 years, Professor Hayes said. The paper is significant because it reports a new set of mito uh, mitogenomes, said evolutionary biologist David Lambert of Griffith uh, University, uh, who was not involved in the study. But we think uh, using only mitogenomes was a limitation of the work and being able to pinpoint the timing of events uh, using only the sequence of mitochondrial DNA is a debatable proposition. Uh, the really powerful stuff is when you see uh, when you use whole genomes and I think that's the next step Professor Lambert said. Okay, so check out check out my 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 recent my other video. Uh, you you listen to the interview. So archaeological scientist Ian uh, Muffet Muffat of uh, Flinders University was uh, also intrigued by the research, but would have liked to see more information about how the archaeology about how the archaeology of the region put puts the genetic results in context. For me, the big take home message from this paper and the exciting Part of this is to say that uh, this is a question that begs further investigation, both from a geological and archaeological point of view, Dr. Moffat said. Uh, Dr. Chan uh, agrees that additional archaeology, archaeological and nuclear DNA data could give rise to different stories and high hypothesis, hypothesis uh, about um, origins. Okay. One day we will. Be, we'll, one day we will be able to have uh, compute, computational power to combine all these uh, pieces of information together and get an even clearer picture of our history, and that will be a great day. All right. So um, it is very. It's not a. It's a skill reading these articles. Okay. It is a skill. Okay. And the skill can be perfected. All right. So. Yeah, uh, how, how are you guys liking this information? If you like it, please um, like the stream. Uh, invite your friends to, to come in. Okay, so I will stop presenting for now. And let's see, uh, I'm going to, um, I have another article. I have, I have several articles actually to, 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 to present. So uh, without much ado, I will uh, leave me comments. Okay, leave me comments in the comment section and let me know. Uh, what you think okay get back into the get into the uh description box read the articles for yourself and, and tell me what you think okay and uh, let us learn together so um 
moving on to the next article, okay. Like I was saying, okay, the evidence is overwhelming, okay. There's so much, there's so much. Uh, there's so much. Um, okay, so here, there's so much news on this, okay. There's so much news on this. So um, now this takes me to um, science, okay, science news, independent journalism since 1921, okay. An excuse to have a drink there. Okay, humans, uh, maternal ancestors may have arisen 200,000 years ago in Southern Africa, but new DNA findings don't offer a complete picture of how and when Homo sapiens emerged. Okay, so it's uh, it's very difficult to find out of this. Okay, because nobody can go back into time. Uh, we can only look at the uh, speculative evidence around us. Okay, uh, i.e., fossils and you know little segments of bones and stuff like that. Uh, you know, who knows? An animal could have brought it there. You know, uh, so I mean. It's all speculative now, okay? But um, you know, the evidence is overwhelming that in Southern Africa all these things exist, right? Uh Mahali Salepe uh visited Melbourne once. We uh well uh, uh you're a true blue Aussie now. <laughs> yeah, I'm Aussie, true and true. Uh yeah, <laughs> kidding. <laughs> uh your content uh so deep. Um are you a historian scientist? Uh Western Australia is gonna be a desert in fifty years. Uh that's interesting. Um uh, What's your source? Okay, so my source, you can look at the uh, Australian Bureau, Bureau of Statistics, okay, uh, the Geological uh, Service. You can check that out, okay. Uh, my background is is science, of course. I, I did a lot of science. Uh, my, my interest was actually geography. Uh, so uh, I did mechanical engineering, okay. I have a degree in mechanical engineering from Swinburne, and I have done two years of civil engineering, which I put off to, you know, work and, and make a bit of money. So, uh, and also I have a, mo uh, a mortgage, so uh, that has become a bit difficult, but uh, yeah, I want to do a PhD in in, um, in geology. So we see where that takes me. So uh, every day, okay, I live and breathe science. Okay, so yeah, uh, this is where my interest comes from. Okay, so uh, this doing the U YouTube is actually, you know, sparing me to my, uh, my aspirations and uh, achieving my goals, so yeah. Uh, Michael, uh, thanks for joining the stream. Um, you have a single flag. Are you from Liberia? That's a Liberian flag, isn't it, Michael? So your your comment is, I don't believe, uh, I don't believe is that science of human origin. Okay, so you don't believe the science of human origin. Um, you must be religious, aren't you? You must be religious, Michael. The Bible version, man's origin is more logical. All right, so um, don't get me on a uh, uh, religion argument right now, but uh, we know people wrote the Bible, okay? Okay, I'll, 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 I'll best the bubble right now, okay? Europeans wrote the Bible, they brought the Bible to you. A black African subjugated you, enslaved you, okay? When you look at Australia, when you look at everywhere Europeans are, they are living a good life. They have, they, we, you know, Africans think that Europe and everywhere else is heaven. They gave you the Bible, Juma Kenyatta say, that said that they gave you the Bible, you opened your eyes, they have the land, and you have the Bible. Okay, the Bible was created by the Council of Nicaea. Okay, less than a thousand or two thousand years ago, less than two thousand years ago. Okay, so, so if you're running around praising the Bible and, you know, the Bible is debunked, okay? I'm not going to even go, I'm not going to even waste my time, okay? Uh, there's no evidence, okay? It's all believed, okay? We believe, we believe. There's no evidence, okay? The Bible said man was made from clay, but the Bible never talked about all these fossils we are finding, all these bones, all these bones of things that were human beings that lived 300,000 years ago. Huh? The Bible never spoke of Australian Aborigines. The Bible never spoke of anybody. Right? And you don't believe in science. Okay, fair enough. Well, science is not a belief. Okay, you don't believe in science. Science is de demonstrable by, by mathematics. Okay. 
okay, not only logic, but mathematics and calculations, okay, and experiments. Okay, so you can you can experiment it, you can repeat the experiment, but you can't repeat anything in the Bible. It doesn't lead anywhere. Okay, it's all just believe. It's all beliefs. Okay, so uh yeah. I don't want to burst your religious bubble here, but um yeah, I'm yet I'm yet to see if you believe that Jesus is gonna come down this uh, the cloud, he's gonna be Jesus is gonna be riding on the cloud. Okay, in 2019, if you believe that somebody's gonna be riding on a cloud. You must you must be out of your mind because the ancient people thought the cloud was something very very solid they didn't understand the science about the cloud but we fly airplanes through the clouds so if you if you think that anybody is going to be riding on a cloud okay it's insane it's insanity okay all right fair enough uh moving on okay so uh So now, um, humans, uh, maternal ancestors may have arisen 200,000 years ago in Southern Africa, uh, but new DNA findings don't offer a complete picture of how and when Homo sapiens emerged. Okay, so members of Southern Africa uh, foraging groups like these sun um, sand hunters poses DNA, um, uh, possess DNA indicating that th their maternal roots go back around 200,000 years. Uh, in some cases, 300,000. Okay, years, years to an area what is now uh, northern Botswana, uh, which, is, uh, which researchers say. Okay, so by Bruce uh, Bauer, okay, uh, October 28th, um, 2019. So this is, uh, I think this is Monday. So humankind's maternal roots uh, extend back about 200,000 years to what was then a large region of uh, Southern Africa, as studies suggest. But these results highlight how much remains unknown about human origins. Examining, va uh, variation, examining variations in a type of uh, maternal inherited uh, DNA, Matern maternally inherited DNA. Scientists could conclude that the founding maternal uh, line of Homo sapiens arose in what's now northern uh, Botswana. Then around 130 years ago, uh, some members of that group migrated in in two waves to East Africa via a vegetated corridor created by increased uh, rainfall. The researchers uh, report. Until until then, the corridor was arid and sparsely uh, vegetated. These uh, or those East African uh, migrants may have eventually given rise to early uh, herding and farming groups there. Okay, so we know that even uh, the cow was first domestic, uh, domesticated in, in, in East Africa around uh, Somalia. That's why they defy uh, the, the cow. Okay, uh, when you look at the Nile River, the civilization of, of Egypt started from, from the Nile, Uganda. Okay, Uganda, Rwanda, Kenya, uh, Ethiopia, you know, Somalia, Tanzania. Okay, the Great Lakes region. This is where humans started from. This is where the Egyptians started from, and the 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 the, the god happy of of the Nile is uh, I think it's a hippo. I think uh, hippo crocodile. I'm not too sure. But then Egyptians said that the origin is is the the beginning of the Nile. So we all know where that is. Okay, that is um, the Great Lakes region. Uganda and one not Congo. All right, so uh, when you look at all the Egyptian gods, you know, um, Isis, um, she wears a, the, the bull horn, okay, with the sun disc in the middle, okay, the bull horn signifying the cow. All right, so, um, and even the Israelites, the so called Israelites, when they left Israel, uh, when they left Egypt, they left to the Egyptian goddess, okay. Um, uh, what was it? Hato, I think Hato. It's called the bull. Okay, and they, when they got the the golden calf, that's when they made the golden calf relates to Egypt. Okay, the golden calf relates to Egypt. Okay, so or praising the the cow. Okay, being being you know the giver of life and whatnot. So that's why even when you go to India and stuff like that, they still uh, give reference to the bull and, and stuff like that, or the or the buffalo. So a second population pulls out of the uh, maternal homeland, moved southwest, um, 
all the way to the southern tip of Africa by a, around 110,000 years ago, uh, while some members stayed behind uh, geneticist Vanessa Hayes and colleagues report online October 28th in Nature. Uh, Michael says, so you are an atheist. I'm not an atheist. Um, I, I just, I'm not just a believer, okay? I am a scientist, all right? Uh, I'm not a, I'm not an atheist. I don't subscribe to anything. If anything, I'm an uh, agnostic, okay? I, I am an agnostic. I, I believe that nobody knows, okay? Nobody knows when it comes to God, okay? Everybody wants to talk for God, but God has no power to speak for himself. All right. God has no power whatsoever to speak for himself. Everybody wants to speak for God. Everybody would like to speak for God any given time. Any given time. And we know uh, the pastors in Africa are nothing more than pimps. They make a whole lot of money. OK, everybody. But it's a form of energy. OK, it's a form of energy. Anybody can tap in it for inspiration. It's great. OK, God is great in terms of inspiration okay god has inspired people to do so many things europeans to do conquer the world and do so many things in god we trust okay you know god can be anything if you believe in it and it's all just believe believe it has no value at all it's so porous it has no value okay it holds no it doesn't hold anything it's only a belief a thought of mind okay state of mind that's what god is so your god can be anything okay so the fact that everybody can go and speak for God, speak in the name of God, but God can never, never, never speak for himself or herself or itself. Right? Right. Okay, so um, going back to my article. As in the previous uh, migration, climate data indicate that uh, wetter conditions created a green pathway for people to traverse. Southern migrants became uh, specialists in hunting and gathering along the coast. The scientists uh, speculate. So leaving home, new DNA, new DNA an, uh, an, uh, analyzes uh, suggest uh, suggest that around 200,000 years ago, a founding maternal lineage of Homo sapiens, uh, red circle. So you see the red circle here. Okay. Uh, the red circle circle indicates, uh, you know. Uh, where the origin is, okay, this is Botswana, okay, uh, Southern Africa, all right, and going further up, okay, this is all the Great Lakes region, all these rivers around here is just a, you know, it's just a viable spot for, for life, bird life, whatnot, everything you find it there, you find it here, so, so gorgeously beautiful. All right. So the green here says maternal homeland. So uh, we believe that it was uh, Ethiopia or Romia, but uh, you know, every now and then science is pointing to a, you know, a different um, direction. Uh, now, Southern Africa, Botswana. So everyone uh, alive today goes back genetically to one maternal uh, starting point in Southern Africa, says uh, Hayes of Garvin Institute of Medical Research in Sydney. Australian in an in an October 24 news uh, conference uh, geologic and archaeological uh, evidence suggests that the homeland was characterized by vast ancient wetlands that allow humans to thrive there for about 70,000 years but the question of how when and where homo sapiens originated remains far from settled okay so that's because uh, Hayes, uh, Hayes' team examined only mitochondrial DNA, which represents a tiny fraction of human ancestry, says uh, archaeolog archaeologist Eleanor uh, Scary, or Sherry, I can't pronounce her, of the Max Planck Institute of Science of Human History in um, Jena, Germany. So ancient folks uh, who posed, who possessed forms of mitochondrial uh, DNA that managed to get uh, passed to people today were not the only people living in Africa 2000, 200,000 years ago or earlier. Uh, scary or seri uh, emphasizes. So only studies of entire genomes, uh, blah, 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 reference there, or at least uh, uh, analyzes of, analyzes? Analyzes of uh, DNA, should be analysis 
of uh, DNA, nuclear DNA can provide uh, provide reliable glimpse of ancient uh, human origins, uh, she argues. In contrast to mitochondrial uh, DNA, uh, nuclear DNA is inherited from both parents and would provide clues to the timing and location of hum humankind's uh, paternal roots. Uh, researchers will need to extract ancient DNA from human fossils to determine whether southern African uh, foraging groups today are related to people who lived in the same region 50,000 or 200,000 years ago, uh, says uh, geneticist Sarah Tishkov of the University of Pennsylvania. And numbers of East African foragers are now so small that mitochondrial DNA can't uh, resolve the age and location of their maternal roots, leaving a big question mark about humankind's maternal evolution, Tiskov says. Okay, going continuing the article. Taking uh, available archaeological fossil and DNA evidence into account, present day Homo sapiens probably originated from mating among human groups all across Africa that had different mixes of skeletal traits okay, beginning around 300,000 years ago, uh, Scary argues. So all, all our very existence is due to us mixing. Okay, so humans are mixing everywhere you go. We are mixing, we are mixing. D the moment we stop mixing, okay, that's the moment we go extinct. Okay, uh, evidence is shown as that uh, Neanderthals went extinct because they were very, very inbred. Okay, they were very, very inbred. So inbreeding can cause uh, all this, okay, uh, extinction. And the reason, the only reason human beings, uh, modern humans survived is because of our diversity, all right, and our ability for us to, to mix, okay. So uh, mixing is a very, very good thing, okay? Very, very good thing. You exchange genetic material, okay? Uh, a baby is formed with the strongest genetic material possible. So if, you, if you're lucky, you have someone off a very, very strong genetic background with somebody with another type of strong genetic background and you mix them together, you get the best out of that, okay? So i.e. when you have like a European, they have ability to synthesize vitamin D easily wherever they go, okay? And you, you have a black African doesn't have the ability to synthesize vitamin D that very easily. So when you have these people mixing, okay, when you have a European and a black African mix, you have a person that can synthesize vitamin D very, very easily. And they have the very, very strong genetic uh, uh, properties, so yeah. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing. And I don't subscribe to races anyway. We all the same race. We all the same human race. Uh, ethnicity, you can say that. But when it comes to race, we are all of the same genetic material. Okay, that's why we can procreate. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, going back to the article, um, it's possible, even likely, that. Uh, Geographic centers contribute to portions of their heritage to build a uh, genome, uh, which, which cannot be addressed by mitochondrial uh, diversity alone, says uh, geneticist uh, Rebecca Kahn of the University of Hawaii at uh, Manoa. Okay, but the new study provides crucial support for evidence that the roots of human mitochondrial uh, DNA extend back as early as 200,000 years ago in sub Saharan Africa. Okay, South Sahara in Africa only means be below, below, below the Sahara. Okay, this is only what it means. It doesn't mean anything derogatory or anything like that. It just means below the, the, the desert. Okay, as the desert, as the Sahara became dry, people migrated south into the lush regions. Okay, it's just common sense, right? It's just common sense. Uh, now, where am I? She she and her colleagues uh, reported the first mitochondrial DNA support for the for that uh, uh, scenario in a landmark uh, 1987 paper. Kent's uh, group concluded that uh, living people's mitochondrial DNA stemmed from one woman, popularly dubbed mitochondrial um, Eve. 
who lived in Africa about 200,000 years ago, but it was unclear where she originated and how subsequent human migrations from uh, migrations from there might have occurred. So Hayes, uh, Hayes's team studied a rare form of mitochondrial DNA known as LO, which is today largely re uh, restricted to the Khoisan people of Southern Africa. Okay, uh, Khoisan, Khoisan consists of uh, separate populations of herder, uh, herder, herder gatherers and hunter gatherers who speak languages containing click. Kosa, I can't even say it. Kosa, Kosa. Okay, forgive me. I'm trying to say that. Click. Okay, I'm not very good with that, so I'm very, very far removed, right? Over the last decade, researchers have determined that LO has far more ancient roots uh, than other forms of mitochondrial DNA that have been inherited by living people. Uh, the researchers collected LO mitochondrial DNA from 198 indigenous people living in Southern Africa, mainly Khoisan. Adding, uh, adding in previously published samples, Hayes, Hayes' group analyzed uh, LO mitochondrial DNA from a total, total of 1,217 1, people. And we know the Germans committed a mass genocide on these Khoisan people. So a whole lot of these ancient people were killed off. So it makes it very difficult to trace uh, DNA now. Uh, but then I suppose they can get it from the bones as well. So it's very, very well documented. Uh, and they, they took some of the body parts to Europe in their museums and stuff. Very, very sick thing they did. Right, very, very sick. So recently, even um, the Namibian uh, president uh, uh, proposed that one of the, the bodies be retained from Germany and, and stuff like that. So, so mitochondrial uh, DNA accumulates uh, changes slowly over many generations based on numbers of mitochondrial uh, DNA alterations to samples from different parts of Southern Africa. The scientists calculated how long ago and approximately where each LO um, variant originated, revealing the ancient migrations and the ancestral homeland. Comparisons uh, with geological geologic data and computer simulations of ancient climate shifts uh, corroborated the genetic evidence for the timing of migrations out of the homeland, the researchers say. Okay, so this is why we call Africa Alkebalon. Okay, Alkebalon only means homeland. Okay. Al Kebalon, it's it's an Arabic word, all right, meaning homeland or land of the blacks. Okay. Uh, while the proposed uh, uh, while the, while the proposed homeland region is more arid and sparsely populated today, it contains small lakes and abundant vegetation that supported a variety of animals along with human beings between or humans between two hundred thousand years and hundred thousand years ago. Uh, he says. Okay, so that was the end of the article. Uh, this is uh, Bruce Bauer. If you want to know about him, the article is in the description box. You can check it out. All right. So that's the end of that article. Um, uh, let's see. I have. Well, I'm, how am I doing with time? I think I'm doing all right. I have more articles to read. Uh, So I uh, have another article, science, science, a study claims to identify homeland of more humans. Uh, let's see, October 30th, okay. So I'm gonna go to my next article. All right, if you're liking the stream, please. Uh, if you're enjoying the stream, please like it. Okay, share it, invite your friends. All right, um, okay, let's go on to the next article. Okay, so my next article is from um, uh, Surprising Science, okay? Surprising Science, uh, bigthink.com, okay? So yeah, study claims to identify the homeland of all uh, modern humans. The DNA study looks for the home of the earliest modern humans, uh, Paul 
uh, right now, October 30th, 2019. So this is very, very recent, okay? This is very recent. This was like two days ago, okay? So here, if you, if you can see the image here, Come on, come on, come on. This, this page is so glitchy. This page is so glitchy. Well, let's see, it's so glitchy, but I'll try and extract as much information out of here. Okay. So here, here is a science, scientific uh, uh, representation, okay, uh, of the lush region when it's uh, wet and green, okay. So uh, the, the region is called uh, Okavango Delta. A DNA study traces the homeland of modern humans to the uh, Mac, Magadi. <laughs> I'm trying to pronounce that, okay. Magadi Gadi. Makadi Gadi Okavango wetland. All right. So, yeah, bear with me. Okay. I'm sorry. I am struggling with that. Okay. I'm not going to try and pronounce it again. But yeah, it's in it's in um, Southern Africa, Okavango wetland. All right, so um, come on, website is so glitchy. This one. So the area is shared by modern day. Uh, the area is shared by modern day. Um, countries of Botswana, Namibia, and Zimbabwe. Uh, the researchers drew conclusions from the mitochondrial DNA of humans living in that area today, but some scientists questioned their methodology. So uh, bear with me, the, uh, the website is very, very glitchy. Is there a specific location on earth where humans like us originated? A new study pinpoints on pinpoints an area called the, uh, here we go again, Mac. Gadik Gadi Okavango wetland, shared by the modern day uh, countries of Botswana, Namibia, and uh, Zimbabwe in southern Africa as the birthplace of modern humans, Homo sapiens sapiens, okay, about 200,000 years ago. Scientists from the Garvin Institute of Medical Research discovered that the earliest ancestors of humans appeared in, the, in that area and lived there for about 70,000 years. Eventually, they were forced to expand their domain by the climate changes in Africa. The study led um, Professor Vanessa Hayes from uh, the study lead uh, Professor Vanessa Hayes from Garvin Institute of Medical Research, who is also associated with the University of Sydney and University of Pretoria, highlight, highlighted the significance of their find. And my, my DNA test, okay, my DNA test cost me a fortune. It cost me like $400, okay? Whereas other DNA companies who charge you $60, they're not gonna dig into it. They're just gonna look at just a small, you know, small connections and, and give you what they feel is right. But if you pay the big money, okay, there are DNA tests that cost $1,000, okay? If you pay that much money, you get your the value of your back. Okay, so it is what it is, right? So not all DNA companies are the same, but my DNA, my DNA test comes from Australia, okay, uh, by by lead scientists who who've been studying gen genetics and human migration and DNA for a very long time. Okay, uh, for their study, the scientists focused on examining the mitochondrial DNA of modern day uh, residents of the area. Hayes um, explained that. Uh, my, my, mitochondrial DNA acts like a time capsule of our ancestral uh, mothers, accumulating changes slowly over generations. This fact allowed the researchers to compare the DNA code or mitogenome of different people to figure out how closely related they are. So scientists are able to use collected blood samples to put together a much improved catalog of the mitogenomes of the early humans. The study's first author, uh, Dr. Eva Chan, from the Garvin Institute of Medical Research, who led the uh, phylogenetic uh, 
uh, analysis expanded on the methodology. We merged 198 new rare uh, mitogenomes to the current database of modern humans, earliest known population, the LO lineage, said Chan. Adding, this allowed us to refine the evolutionary tree of our earliest ancestral branches better than our, uh, ever before. Okay, so that was the end of that article. It's a quick one, so good. I'll move on to another one. Uh, so I'll just close this one. It's still, it's still glitchy. So um, moving on. Okay, nobody's uh, interacting in the comments. Okay, um, apart from some religious uh, fanatics. Okay, um, but yeah, feel free to ask me any question. Okay, I'm not belligerent. All right, I'm not belligerent at all. I will try and intellectually answer your questions. All right. So um. Moving on to the next article. Uh, do, 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 do. So then, from um, Nature World News, okay, natureworldnews.com, okay, Northern Botswana, the, the place where modern humans originated. So these people are going on asserting, okay, they are asserting their knowledge now. Uh, in fact, okay, this is on October, October 31st, 2019. This was just yesterday um, or today in, if you are in America, okay? It would be today for you. Okay, so uh, here, boom, okay? Uh, this is fresh out of the oven, okay? Fresh from the oven. Okay. So this is now the wetland okay this is now this is what the wetland looks like now okay okay and you can see the salt the salt left over okay it's now dried up but evidently this this was water okay water was here all here was green before all right it was lush and green so we can trace that so uh the first human settled in oh, here here we go again with this name mac gadi gadi okavango uh Paleo wetland in Southern Africa. Northern Botswana in Africa is the best place where is the best place where all ancestors of modern humans dwelled, okay, according to a new study. Uh, Africa has been accepted as a cradle of humankind, okay. So it has been accepted, okay. It's not a myth. Okay, Africa is the is the best place of all humanity. Africa is the Garden of Eden. All right. There are multiple fossil P uh, pieces of evidence to support that they appeared 200,000 years ago, but the exact location remained a mystery until now. The study published in the journal Nature claimed that um, for 70,000 years, Homo sapiens thrived in this region before moving out due to climate change. Uh, comparing DNAs, okay. Mitochondrial DNA is like a time capsule that records the slow changes over the years, said Vanessa Hayes, uh, the lead author of the Garvin Institute of Medical Research and the University of Sydney. That's why uh, to find that's why to find a missing puzzle piece about the first 100,000 years of modern humans, the researchers collected uh, DNA samples uh, DNA samples from the local communities in Namibia and South Africa. Then they compared the DNA codes from different individuals to know how closely related they are. The genomes of at least 1,200 indigenous Africans were collected and analyzed. Um, and through this, the, the team was able to find out the history of LO, one of the oldest DNA lineages in the world. Okay, Despite being passed down through mitochondria of hundreds, for hundreds of thousands of years, LO uh, or L0 remained unchanged. The researchers tracked where and when the first uh, sub, sub lineages appeared, and it helped them finally pinpoint it, the precise location of where the first carriers of LO uh, lived. At the, oh, here we go again, at the Mag Magadigadi Okavango uh, Paleo wetland in South Africa. The modern human diaspora 
uh, the modding human diaspora. Okay, so there's some talk about the modding human diaspora. The researchers found out that the region once had the biggest lake system in Africa, which disappeared about 200,000 years ago due to some tectonic plate movement. Uh, this created a vast wetland, uh, said Andy Moore, a geologist from uh, Rhodes University who uh, co-authored the study. It is common. It is a common knowledge that wetlands played a major role in sustaining life of ancient civil civilization as it provided everything needed for survival. All right, everything needed for survival, wetlands. Okay. That's why you see wetlands is teeming with like a lot of bird life and, and, and whatnot. And Africa has a ton of those. Okay, Africa has a ton of wetlands. Okay, that supports, supports this theory, but proving fact, okay. People may say it's a theory, but uh, it's a fact, all right. Theory as in, it's still in the case of studies. All right. It is a common knowledge that wetlands played a major role in sustaining life of ancient civilization as it provided everything needed for survival. That's why you see all ancient civilizations were built along uh, river, river, uh, river ways. Okay. I.e. the Indus Valley, uh, the, the Nile Valley and stuff like that. The, uh, um, uh, what's this uh, Mesopotamia, the you know, uh, the Babylonian Empire, and, and all that were were centered around uh, rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates, uh, and stuff like that. So, uh, the migration is said to begin about 100,000, uh, 130,000 to 110,000 years ago. The community split into three. Uh, the first group ventured to the northeast, and then next to the southwest. Uh, the remaining state in Africa and became the ancestors of the indigenous people. Okay, so we know the L3, okay, LO stayed in, in Africa, L2 uh, became um, uh, West Africans, uh, Bantus and whatnot, L3 became um, uh, North Africans. And also subsequently, L3 moving out of Africa, becoming um, M and splitting out into into J and, and, and Q and, and O and D and whatnot. All right. So uh, unfortunately, the Northeast group did not flourish, okay? Sadly, the Southwest group, on the other hand, uh, su successfully uh, learned how to utilize resources found in the marine uh, environment, which allowed them to have steady population growth, uh, steady population growth, growth how you said. But how did the climate change? According to uh, the researchers, the diaspora uh, happened because of some changes to the climate, and they believed it was due to the slight tilting of the Earth's axis, uh, which changes the summer solar radiation in the southern hemisphere. Another author, uh, Axel Timmerman, uh, Tim, uh, who is the director of the IBS Center for Climate Physics and Pusan National uh, University. So Pusan is uh, South Korea, said that uh, this also, Pusan, 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 said that this also leads to uh, periodic shifts in rainfall across Southern Africa, which have opened green corridors that allow the ancient uh, humans to get out from the region of the first time, for the first time, unfortunately, Gone were the wetlands uh, where these ancient communities flourished, where these ancient communities flourished. So, type of. What was left in Africa was a huge desert. Yet, as long as blood of, as long as the blood of the people remained, the story of these ancestors will never cease to exist. So, climate, climate is very, very significant in how human beings migrate. Okay, so like I was saying, I was saying to Celepe before, uh, my sister who lives in Western Australia, uh, Western Australia will become a desert in 50 years. Okay, so more <laughs> about half from Western Australia to South, uh, Southern Australia or South Australia, sorry, uh, is going to become a desert. And all the, we're going to see all these people from, uh, that's why Western Australia is sparsely populated and the eastern part of Australia is densely populated. So we're going to see people from Western Australia migrate to, to, to uh, Eastern Australia. That's why you've seen a lot of developing, development in Melbourne. Melbourne is fast becoming the biggest city in, in Australia. But soon, 
Melbourne will become very dry and hot as it is becoming. You know, so I think the climate is going to change. Climate is going to always cause people to migrate. And that's what happened to North Africa when the, the North Africa was lush and green 10,000 to 5,000 years ago. Uh, people were migrating. People were enjoying life in North Africa. It flourished the uh, the empire, the Egyptian empire, the Malian empire, and, and all these pe uh, people. All right. But as, you know, climate change, okay, increases with our, you know, uh, our joy, you know, and stupor, okay, you know, of burning fossil fuel and increasing CO2 in the environment, uh, we're causing, we're speed, speeding up, you know, uh, climate change, okay, yeah. But all this can be, can be, can be reserved or uh, reversed or slowed down, okay, uh, if we, if we, uh, you know, control our activities, okay, so I just wanted to point that out, okay. Uh, when we saw the ice age started melting, okay, about 20,000 years ago, after 20,000 20, years ago, the ice age was over, uh, the ice started melting, uh, it spared migration of Africans into Europe, okay, uh, the Cro-Magnon man and Cheddar man and stuff, stuff like that, stuff like that, and also allowed uh, pale-skinned people to crawl out, out of their caves and, and, and come, okay, so they're in search of resources that led to the invading of Africa and stuff like that. So we kind of blame them, okay? We kind of blame them too much, uh, although we blame them for for that, but uh, it's all nature, right? So um, Darwin's theory of the survival of the fittest also holds a lot of water. So this is what we are seeing. So Africans, Africans were so comfortable in their environment and did not expect people to come and invade them. And that's what's happened to Africa. All right, but things are changing now. And thank God scientists are able to um, bring these things to the forefront and to light. And people are beginning to uh, change the way they perceive uh, the world and see African people. All right, family. Uh, let's see, how much time do I have? I have a bit of time. I have 30 more minutes. So uh, I'll move on, moving on to my next article. Um, okay, this is also, an, this is a very short one, by the way. This is a very short article. Uh, And this one also asserts that all modern humans originated in northern Botswana. This is Eurasia Review. Okay. Right. So all modern humans originated in northern Africa. Uh, northern. Sorry. Sorry. I repeat. All all modern humans originated in northern Botswana. Okay. My bad. Uh, this is by uh, Eurasia.com. EurasiaReview.com. Okay. Uh, check it out. Article in the description box. Okay. This is where, if you if you if you in doubt, this is where it is. Okay, this is this here is Botswana. Okay, right. All modern humans originate originated in northern Botswana. Uh, Africa has. Let me close this up. Uh, okay. Africa has long been uh, I don't want to share this. Africa has long been regarded as the cradle of uh, humankind. Uh, scientists seeking a new uh, seeking a more specific location have narrowed in on uh, northern Botswana as the homeland for all modern humans. CNN reports uh, citing a new study. Uh, their self. Okay, there south of the Greater Zambezi uh, River Basin, uh, which includes uh, uh, northern Botswana and parts of Namibia and uh, Zimbabwe, the ancestors of Homo sapiens began 200,000 years ago, the researchers said. Their study, their new study published Monday in the, so Monday the 28th, right? Published uh, Monday in the journal Nature suggests that the ancestors of modern humans thrived for 70,000 years in this region before climate change led them to migrate out of Africa and eventually span the globe. So previously, some fossil evidence has suggested that modern humans originated in Eastern Africa. Uh, DNA evidence has pointed to Southern Africa uh, where Botswana is located. And mind you, this is, this is October 31st, okay? 
in, in if you are in America, if you are in you know in the Western Hemisphere, hemisphere okay, this is your today, but in Australia, it is tomorrow for you. Okay, so we are in the future, right? We are in the future. Here today is the first of uh, November. You guys are, uh, you know, you guys are still in yesterday. <laughs> The study uh, published Monday uh, in the journal Nature suggests that the ancestors of modern humans thrived 70,000 years in this region before climate change led them to migrate out of Africa and eventually span the globe. Uh, previously, some fossil evidence has suggested that modern humans originated in Eastern Africa. DNA evidence has pointed to Southern Africa, where Botswana is located. It has been clear for some time that anatomically modern humans appeared in Africa roughly uh, 200,000 years ago, what has been long debated is the exact location of this emergence and subsequent dispersal of our earliest ancestors, said Vanessa Hayes, uh, lead study author of the Garvin Institute of uh, Medical Research and the Is University of Sydney. We, we, we've been um, able to pinpoint where, uh, pinpoint what we believe as our human uh, homeland. So yeah, all the good stuff. Check out the article in the description box. You can donate and whatnot. All right. So moving on to another article. Okay. Uh, this is going to be my last article. Uh, this article is now the party pooper. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's it's gonna um it's tr literally trying to throw a, a shade on on all this genetic research. Okay. Uh, but mind you, this article came in April. Okay, this article came in April. So, uh, yeah. Uh, this new article, which I'm going to present to you now, came in April. And the latest finds and research uh, and publications uh, are very recent uh, in October. All right. Okay. So, uh, I'll share this new article now. Okay, so, so this is only to uh, throw a shade uh, on what's going on. Okay, Europeans feel like uh, they want to dominate everything, but uh, you know, Europe was part of Africa. Okay, uh, in fact, okay, in fact, Eurasia is part of Africa. Okay, because it's still joined to Africa. Okay, the technical definition of a continent is a large body. Or of land or landmass surrounded by water. So technically, Australia is a continent. All right, Australia is a continent. Uh, America, north, south, north and south, is a is a single continent because it's surrounded by water. Okay. The only separation, the only separation there is this um, the the Panama Canal, which was created by Americans. The only separation from Africa to Eurasia is the Suez Canal, which was created by, you know, Americans as well. So in actual fact, Europe is not even a continent at all. Eurasia is not even a continent. It's it's all part of a big landmass joined to Africa. All right. So uh, uh, if this is too difficult for you to understand, okay, do some studies. Okay, do some study. So uh, this article again from bigthink.com, okay. Uh, this doesn't hold much much value uh weight okay this doesn't hold much weight at all uh this website is very glitchy because there's way too many ads on this on this uh uh website okay so the jaw bones of an eight million okay i'll take i'll take the new fossil suggests human ancestors evolved in europe not africa and we know this is bs okay this is bs so, and, and the word here evolved, okay, the word here evolved, so they throw that in there, evolved, but mind you, it does not say originate, okay. Evolution does not mean origination, okay. Two different things, okay. Human beings are actually evolving right now. We are evolving right now, and evolution only means change. So we are evolving right now, okay, so um, yeah. Uh, the jaw bones of an 8 million year old ape were discovered in Nikiti, Greece in the, 19, uh, in the 90s. 
researchers speculate it could be uh, previously unknown uh, species and one of the uh, one of humanity's earliest uh, evolutionary ancestors. Uh, these fossils may it could it could be a monkey, it could be a monkey. Nobody knows. These fossils may change how we view the evolution of our species. Okay, but human beings left Africa. Okay, fully human. Okay, I repeat, more anatomically correct human beings left Africa. Okay, fully human. Humans did not evolve outside Africa. Human beings left Africa fully evolved and well equipped. Okay, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Okay, right. So Homo sapiens have been on Earth for 200,000 years, give or take a few uh, 10,000 years uh, stretches. Uh, much of that time is shrouded in the fog of uh, prehistoric uh, prehistory. Uh, what we do know has been uh, pieced together by deciphering the fossil record uh, through the principles of evolutionary theory. Yet new discoveries contain the potential to refashion that the knowledge and lead scientists and lead scientists to new previously unconsidered conclusions. Okay, so we know this is BS. Okay, this article came in April way before the new uh, studies and, and finds, okay? So this article is only a contradiction, okay? It's only a con contradiction, doesn't mean that it's true. They only found a finger bone, they only found a finger bone in a cave in Greece, and they're like, ah, humans, evolution, human evolution started in Europe. But BS, okay, Greece and Africa is so close. Greece and Africa is not more than 40, uh, 40 uh, kilometers apart. It's not even 20 kilometers apart at some some part, okay. And and the Mediterranean Ocean was was not an ocean before. It was all dry land. So um yeah, miss me with that BS, please. Okay, but yeah, just for uh you know, um, uh, all I say, just for controversy's sake. Okay, we'll, we'll look at this article. So a set of eight million year old teeth may have done just that. Okay, set of teeth, just a teeth. Okay. Researchers recently inspected the upper jaw and lower jaw of an ancient European ape. Their conclusions uh, suggest that humanity's forebearers uh, may have uh, arisen in Europe before migrating to Africa, potentially uh, uh, appending um, a scientific uh, consensus, consensus that has stood uh, since Darwin's um, day. And they say an ape. An ape can be a monkey, okay? An ape can be a gorilla, okay? We know that, okay? Uh, apes and primates love hot climate zones, hot climate zones. This is why Europe cannot be anywhere closer to the poles, cannot be any origination of anything primate, all right? So we know that Southern, Southern Europe is a little, is, is warm. Southern Europe is warm. Uh, Spain is recording 50 degrees days in summer. So we know that you know Africans lived in all those uh, regions. So all those regions were once ruled by Africans, and all Greece was only an extension of of the Egyptian uh, African you know empire, right before the Macedonians uh, took it over, okay, and usurped uh, you know Greek civilization. All right, so rethinking uh, uh, humanity's origin story, okay. So we have the gibbon, orang, uh, skeletons of chimpanzee, gorilla, uh, and man. It's fair, it's pretty similar. It's pretty similar. This is where they can draw the line of um, ancestral uh, lineage, okay, through these uh, so and so evolution processes. Okay, so the, the front piece of uh, Thomas um, uh, Huxley's evidence as the man's place in nature in 1863 is sketched by natural uh, history uh, artist Benjamin Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins, uh, okay. As reported in New Scientist, uh, the eight to nine million year old uh, hominin uh, jawbone, jawbones were found in Nikiti, Northern uh, Greece in the 90s. Scientists originally pegged uh, the uh, 
Chomfis as belonging to a member of the Aran, Arano Pithecus on the uh, genus of extinct Eurasian ape. Okay. Who well, you knows? It could be a monkey. Who you knows? Okay, you never know. David uh, Began, okay, because they only found they only found a tooth and a jawbone. Okay, it doesn't say anything. But in Africa, they're finding con uh, intact skulls. Okay, and a whole skeletal skeletal frame. Okay, dating back two hundred thousand years, a million years. Okay, David uh, Began, an anthropologist at the University of Toronto, and his team recently re-examined the jawbones. They argue that the original identification was incorrect based on the fossils, hominin-like canines and uh, premolar roots. They identify that the ape belongs to a previously known proto-hominin. Uh, okay, so proto-hominin. The researchers uh, hypothesize that the that these proto-hominins were uh, the evolu evolutionary ancestors of another European great ape, uh, Graco Pithecus, which the same team uh, tentat tentatively uh, identified as an early hominin in 2017. But those, all those people went extinct. All those hominins went went extinct, and those were not the modern human lineage. Okay, those were another lineage altogether. Okay. Uh, Europe, uh, 7.2 million years ago. Uh, if uh, the precise, if the premise is correct, uh, these hominins would have migrated to Africa 7 million years ago. But this is this is bullshit. Okay, Europe is joined to Africa in the first place. So after undergoing much of their evolutionary uh, development in Europe, okay, uh, began points out of the southeast Europe was once occupied by the ancestors of animals like the giraffe um, rhino too it's widely agreed that this was a was a found fauna of most of what we see in africa today uh he told new scientists if the antelopes and giraffes could get into africa seven million years ago why not the apes okay he recently outlined this uh, idea at a conference of the American um, Association of Physical Anthropologists. Uh, this is really silly. Okay, this is really silly. How come? How come the giraffes are not are not in Europe today? Okay, but they are in Africa. How come the lions are not in Europe today? That they are in Africa. Okay, this is very very silly. Okay. Uh, he, he recently outlined this uh, idea at a conference of the American Association of Physical Anthropologists. Um, it's worth it's worth it's worth nothing uh, noting that uh, Began has made similar hypothesis before. Writing for the Journal of Human Evolution in 2002, Began and Elmar uh, Heinzmann of the Natural History Museum of Stuttgart discussed a great egg fossil found in Germany that they argued could be the ancestor, broadly speaking, of all living great apes and humans. Um, yeah. Oh shit! <laughs> Found in Germany 20,000 years ago, this species, this specimen, is about 1.6, uh, 16.5 million years old. Some 1.5 million years older than uh, similar species found in East Africa. Um, Began said in a statement, "Then it suggests that the great ape and human lineage uh, first appeared in Eurasia and not Africa." Okay, so <laughs> uh, the argument continues. Okay, uh, migrating out of Africa and, and stuff like that. So all these things are not, you know, uh, peer reviewed uh, and, and stuff like that. So um, yeah, so this concludes my uh, uh, my reporting. Okay, my news. Uh, if you made it this far, okay, subscribe to the channel. And uh, let's see if I can show you some. Some images of the Khoisan people. Okay, so as it stands today, the 31st of October, okay, humans originated from Southern Africa. Uh, it's a new uh, research now. All right, new research now. Humans originated from Southern Africa. All right. 
Um, so they found some fossils, they found some new fossils in 2015. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Um, okay, if you, if you see, it's called a uh, uh, Homo neleti. Okay, it's called Homo neleti. It's a missing missing link uh, from the Homo uh, Homo sapien uh, lineage. It's a it's a missing link. Okay, and they, they found that also in Southern Africa. Okay, so as of 2015, okay. this article from 2015 uh, that will be in the description box. Homo uh, naledi fossil trove uh, fossil trove adds a new limbo to uh, a new limb to human family tree. Okay, so. So working in a cave complex deep beneath South Africa's uh, Malmani uh, Dolomites and <laughs> Dolomite, <laughs> the Dolomite, the movie, Eddie Murphy. Okay, an international team of scientists has brought to light an unprecedented tro uh, trove of hominin fossils, uh, more than um, 150, 1,500 uh, 1, well-preserved bones and teeth. Uh, representing the largest, most complete set of such remains found to date in Africa. So this was dis discovered in 2015, okay. So uh, the discovery of the fossils uh, cached in a, a barely accessible chamber in a subterranean uh, labyrinth, not far from Johannesburg, uh, as a new branch to the human family tree. Uh, a creature dubbed Homo naledi. The re remains, uh, scientists believe, could only have been deliberately uh, interred. Okay. So far, parts of at least 15 skeletons uh, representing uh, individuals of all ages have been found, and researchers believe many more fossils remain in the chamber. It is part of the complex limestone caves, part of a, of com, of a complex, it's a part of a complex of limestone caves near what is called the cradle of humankind. Okay, so cradle of humankind, is it? I think it's a, a world heritage site, an archaeological museum where you can go see all these artifacts and stuff like that. The cradle of humankind, a world heritage site in uh, Gauteng province, well known for critical uh, paleon, anthropological, paleon anthropological uh, discoveries uh, of early humans, including the 1947 discovery of 2.3 million year old Australopithecus Af Africanus. So yeah, uh, the rest of the article will be in the description box. So this is the human evolutionary, evolutionary tree uh, dating back 7 million years, okay. Seven million years, we see this uh, branching out, branching out, branching out, all these things branching out, uh, and they've all gone extinct, okay. Uh, to one million years ago, Homo sapiens appeared, uh, chimpanzees and uh, bonobo monkeys, okay, all appeared. Um, we have Homo neanderthal, uh, and all that appeared about 700, 500,000 years ago, Homo neanderthal appeared, uh, we have, uh, Homo sapiens coming out about uh, 300,000 to 200,000 years ago. All right, all right. So uh, yeah, check out the article in the description box. Okay. Um, so um, let's see. Google search on. Um, Uh, was it the Khoisan people? Okay. If you don't don't know who the Khoisan people are, they they're the Bush people of Southern Africa. You can you can check them out. Okay. Let's see. I can show you some images of the Khoisan people. Okay. So the, this is Google image of Khoisan people. Okay. This is what early human beings looked like, and they still look like. Okay. And three hundred thousand years ago. These they're very very short statured people, very very small people. 
uh, about four feet tall. Okay, very tiny people. Um, you know, if you have seen the movie, uh, um, the gods must be crazy. Okay, those were of course some people. They're na naturally very, very light skinned people. Okay, and they live in they live in Africa, southern Africa. They have slanted eyes. Okay, uh, you know, look at this. Okay. If you if you look at this, okay, you think this is someone from China or Thailand or somewhere Cambodia or whatnot. Okay, these are Khoisans from Africa. Okay, these are Khoisans. All right, and this this girl here is just so beautiful. All right, this is a Khoisan. A lot of us may have seen this image before. Okay, all these images you would have seen it before. These are Khoisan people in southern southern Africa. Okay. The Herero tribe, the Herero people. Okay, that's what I was trying to remember. Uh, the the Germans committed a mass genocide on the Herero and the Khoisan and Khoi Khoi people. All right, all right. Uh, here's a Khoisan chief. It's a Khoisan chief. Uh, here's a family of Khoisan people. Okay. Um. Is a group of Khoisan women, okay? Uh, These are Khoisan people, they, they're all very, naturally very light-skinned people, okay? They're not Europeans, they're Africans, all right? These people are Africans, all right? These are Khoisan people. All right, family, I, I think I'm done, okay? I am done. Um, I am done. Uh, yeah. So um, yeah. If you haven't seen my DNA before, okay, uh, check out my DNA. Uh, in 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 my archives, I have a video on my DNA. Uh, a lot of people don't don't like it much, <laughs> but um, yeah, it is it is my DNA. Okay. Uh, you can't change it. I can't change my DNA. Okay, it's a part of me. All right. So, um, yeah, uh, without much ado, okay, I will, I will end the stream. Uh, let me see if I can. Okay, blessings to all. Okay. And, yeah, until next time. Peace. One love.